Generations of economics students have had the fortune, or should I perhaps say the misfortune, to have to learn about the efficient markets hypothesis. It's an idea that gained um, a lot of attention in the 60s and 70s and had a powerful impact on economic policy making. And it's a simple idea that financial markets are setting asset prices minute by minute, tick by tick, that fully reflect all public information about that asset price. Because the prices fully reflect all information about the asset price, now no historical information about the asset price will have any impact on today's asset price. So that the only thing that affects today's asset price will be tomorrow's news about the asset. And so what we then see is asset prices jumping from day to day, hour to hour, tick to tick in response to news. Financial markets, under this hypothesis, are therefore massive processors of news. That's what they do. They take bits of news and work out what it means for the payoffs across all assets in different times and different states of nature and price that asset accordingly. And in a sense, that's all we need to know as we look at the asset price. We don't have to think about anything else because all the information that's relevant is already in that price. And so, we, we learn that markets are efficient, and yet professors have built substantive careers showing that there are anomalies, that you can continually find worlds in which past information has some predictive power for asset prices. And, and so we want to sort of think about why that is. Why is it that some private information that is re relevant to an asset price doesn't get traded into its public price? The one avenue I'm particularly interested in is the idea of herding, that financial markets herd around a particular view. They think that stock X is wonderful, and they price it as though it's wonderful. And no one who thinks it's awful comes out of their office and says, this thing is awful. Nobody shouts, hey, the emperor's got no clothes on. And that's because financial markets tend to herd. The guy who comes out and shouts, the emperor's got no clothes, isn't listened to until everyone realizes the emperor's got no clothes. This idea of herding is pervasive and is also fully rational in some circumstances. If it's costly to collect information, if you have to learn, if indeed um, many other people whose opinion you respect also have that opinion, you may not wish to come out and shout the emperor's got new clothes. I want to try and explain these things, but within the context of rationality. I don't want to relax the assumption of rationality and say that people are all just mad. That may be true, but that's not the way the economists want to think about things.